Hi, my name is Anne Lee Steele. I'm a community manager at the Alan Turing Institute. And today I'll be talking about initial outcomes from a research project on low earth orbit satellites and internet supply chains, especially as they apply to questions of global connectivity. Thank you so much to the Internet Society for supporting this work over the course of the past couple of months. Really what I want to emphasize about the world of LEOs is that it's very much an emerging landscape. We've seen them used in the context of Earth observation and satellite imagery, as well as uh, for reconnaissance purposes, involving an entire suite of military and defense actors that have long been associated with the space industry more broadly. But as they've been increasingly been used for internet connectivity, we see a number of uh, private actors really emerging as leaders in the space, most notably Starlink associated with Elon Musk's um, SpaceX, as well as Amazon's Project Cooper. Really though, the question that this project sought to answer, at least unpacked more fruitfully, was what futures do LEOs actually imagine for us? We've very much seen the narratives closely tied to closing the digital divide or connecting the unconnected, reaching into geographies and areas not previously reachable through existing internet infrastructure. However, in order to imagine or understand how you know, LEOs are really reimagining connectivity, it's important to reconcile or reckon with what the realities of what this might actually mean. And that's led to really three key findings that we've seen over the course of the past number of months. One is this notion of connectivity as strategic. This isn't necessarily new. Space has long been a place of replicating geopolitical tensions. And we've definitely seen this in the landscape of LEOs. We've also seen it become very much a new frontier for warfare um, with the testing of anti-satellite weapons, um, as well as evolving notions of, of sovereignty, really asking questions of who will have access to whose internet through what satellites and at what point. Um, one example, of course, being uh, Starlink's recent use in Ukraine. We've also seen connectivity very much becoming this means for market consolidation. Elio LEO satellite companies are very unique and they really seek to cut across the entire suite of existing infrastructure, really seeking to become full stack internet providers. And this means the same company designing, manufacturing, creating and launching satellites, as well as selling internet directly to consumers. And this is incredibly disruptive and we don't know the full implications of what this may, may mean for private public community actors that currently supply internet in, in different contexts. And, and finally, and this is probably the question that I've spent the most time thinking through and trying to understand, is really this notion of connectivity as an acceptance of an inherent kind of precarity, meaning disposability is very much the norm. The average lifetime of an LEO satellite is roughly five to 10 years. We haven't actually experienced the full lifetime or life cycle of an LEO satellite. And we don't necessarily know what this may mean in the future. We do know, especially as LEOs burn up within our atmosphere, that this will create a lot more space degree, debris and will lead to much more crowded skies. And this has implications for scientific research, um, especially for the work of astronomers, but also has really big implications for, for climate change as we know it now. So very much we see this kind of narrative of common good, uh, of global connectivity, confronting head on the realities of commercialization. And I really wanna leave you all with this question of asking, you know, will this internet supply chain, this internet infrastructure only really become visible when it breaks? Um, we've seen this over the past couple of years of pandemic induced lockdowns and our supply chains um, being shown as, as much more fragile than we had ever thought them to be. And we similarly have seen this increasingly with other forms of internet infrastructure, um, most recently uh, undersea cable um, uh, affecting Tonga after a volcanic uh, eruption, um, showing in real time how fragile the modern internet and its infrastructure actually is. I also wanted to, to show you all this kind of design preview of a visual rendering um, of these ideas really trying to compare the existing kind of undersea uh, cable infrastructure, low earth orbit satellites and the existing research or, or um, reporting that has been done on the subject, very much in this kind of public visual um, and playful format. I invite you all to check out the link um, to, uh, and I really welcome any feedback uh, you may have on this format. 
Thank you so much. Uh, collaborators are definitely welcome. Please get in touch. Um, and thank you again to the Internet Society for supporting this work. <laughs>